So one has to understand what living is. And one can understand that only by observing what actually it is. Not in opposition to a concept, to a formula, to an ideology, but actually what it is. So one must be free to observe actually what our life is, not what it should be. If you are thinking in terms of what it should be, then you are totally avoiding what the actual life is. So what is this life that we are living? This life, the actual daily life, is disorder. Isn't it? There's conflict. There is driving ambition. There's battle in our souls, opposing contradictory desires and wills. endless frustrations. And there is frustration because we have never understood what fulfilment is, and if there is such thing as fulfilment. What is there to fulfil one's own particular little ambition, one's own appetites? envies, ambitions to be somebody. And what is it that a centre that demands all this? Is not that very centre the cause of disorder? And without bringing about order in that life, complete mathematical order. Life has very little meaning. Going to the office every day for the rest of the sixty years or forty years, living in this constant battle between what is and what should be, between the frustrated ambitions and the simple, clear, beautiful life. The images that one has built about oneself and about others, the self-centred activity that's going on all the time, which is isolating each one, and therefore dividing. And that's our life, a life of conflict, a life that has really no meaning as it is. A life that is a battlefield, not only in yourself but also in your relationship. A life of division, contradiction, routine, monotonous, and a life that is, when you look at it very deeply, utterly lonely. 
a life that has no beauty. And that is our life. And we are not exaggerating it. If you observe yourself very carefully, without any prejudice, bias, when you look at every human being right through the world, the saint, the priest, the specialists, the careerists, the ordinary laymen are all caught in this. And we want to escape from it. And so you escape through nationalism, through beliefs, through dogmas, through innumerable forms of entertainment, in which is included the religious entertainment. That's our life. Comparing ourselves with something that should be comparing ourselves with the greater, with the nobler, with the more intelligent, with the more spiritual, and so on and on and on. And therefore, conflict and fear. This is our life, a battle for security and in the very search of security, psychological as well as physical, will bring about destruction. These are obvious facts. And from this we want to escape, because man has lived like this, for thousands and thousands of years, with sorrow, confusion, and great misery and mischief. And without changing all that completely, radically, mere outward revolution, changing a particular system for another system, does not solve this aching agony there is only one revolution, the inward revolution. So, spitting on society, blaming society for your condition, is obviously blaming something which you have created. It's your society. You have built it. by your greed, envy, ambition, competitiveness, comparison, by one's own and inward hatreds, violence. So that is our life, really quite insane life. Now, the question is, how can that life be changed? Not gradually, 
but immediately. Otherwise, you are sowing the seed of violence. Though you may want peace, you are actually sowing the seeds of enmity, misery. So, seeing all this, non-verbally, not as an explanation, not as an idea, but seeing it actually as it is, feeling it, as you feel hunger, therefore being intimately related to it. And you cannot be deeply, beautifully related to this living, which we call life, as long as you have any form of escape from it, any form of distortion. So, awareness without choice to be aware of this whole phenomenon of existence, not someone else's existence, not being aware of this, of our life according to somebody, some philosopher, some guru, some psychologist, but being aware of it actually. Because you yourself see it. If one is so completely aware of it, and one must, because it's, one cannot possibly live as we are living. We are talking inwardly, psychologically, a life that's to torn. And if we want order – and order is virtue – order demands discipline. That is to learn, not to conform, not to imitate, but to learn, and to learn about the disorder, which is our life, to observe it, to learn. And in that observation comes an extraordinary discipline, not imposed by anybody. Because the very observation itself has its own discipline. In the very act of observing your learning, and therefore the learning is the discipline. And if we want order, And order is virtue. Order demands discipline. That is to learn, not to conform, not to imitate, but to learn. And to learn about the disorder, which is our life, to observe it, to learn. And in that observation comes an extraordinary 
extraordinary discipline. Not imposed by anybody, because the very observation itself has its own discipline. In the very act of observing your learning, and therefore the learning is the discipline. 